To God be the glory. I thank God for this day. Amen? Amen. I thank God for allowing me to stand here today on this Mother's Day. And you know, you know, mothers, mothers are a blessing and an expression to God's love. Amen. 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 And I say to each and every one of you that's under the sound of my voice, if your mother is still around, cherish her. Bless her. Love her. Take care of her. Because when she's not there, you're going to miss her. You know, my mother prepared us for a day that she wouldn't be with us. You know, growing up, you never think that your mother ain't going to be there. Y'all ain't our mom. But even though she prepared you the right way, it's still a missing, a void. When she was not there. Mother Day is not the same for me. And my mother's with the Lord. Amen. Even though that I knew, I know if, if she had an opportunity to come back, she wouldn't. Amen. But she's with Jesus. Amen. And when we're with Jesus, that means that God's love is total and complete. Amen. No matter how, we, how much we love our children, our husband, our people, how much we love them, but when we're in the bosom of the Lord, Amen. hallelujah, we don't want to come back. Matter of fact, I wouldn't even want my mother to come back in this mess that's down here right now. Amen? Amen. So I thank God that she is with the Lord. If you heard the reading of our scriptures on Ephesians, the third chapter, the 14th to the 19th verse, uh, our, our title today, our message is God's love is total. Amen. Yeah. God's love is total. And we, we, we're talking about mothers, 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 mothers. Amen. Uh, mothers are a blessing and expression of God's love. And we are celebrating today, Mother's Day. You know, we are celebrating today, me and Pastor Satchel was talking, you know, it's something about Mother's Day. I got a problem with it. <laughs> when you go out to eat, you can hardly get a seat. You go to a restaurant, it's packed. And I mean, like the mothers get everything, but let the Father's Day roll around. <laughs> everything is wide open. <laughs> you go to any restaurant you want. <laughs> On Father's Day, but Mother's Day, oh my God, everybody out. But you know what? Uh, that's all right. Because, see, being a mother might be one of the hardest jobs on the planet. Amen. 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 Mothers are a beautiful expression of God's love. And we, we see his reflection in the lives of our mothers. A mother's love uh, for her child begins at conception. See, when, when, you're, when you're first conceived in your, in your mother's womb and her belly, that love starts right there. Amen. amen and amen. And love starts right there. Why? Because that child becomes a part of you. Mm. She carries that little one for nine months or less. Then she cares for that child 24 and 7 for 18 years or more. You know, it used to be when the child get grown and then at 18 or 21, they go out of the house, it's all right. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Not in this day and time. <laughs> Mama, I need this. Is. You 50 though. <laughs> <laughs> so that has changed. You be 18 and get grown. But now they still got keys to your house. Man. Still, still got keys and look like you just can't get rid of them. <laughs> you know, my children told me, we said, you know what, we're going to change the locks and we're going to go somewhere else. And they said, we're going to look for you. we will going to find you. <laughs> Praise God. But mothers wear so many hats. 
When someone is sick in the family, she becomes the nurse or the doctor. When someone is sad, she covers them with her love and counsel. Uh, when, when we fail in, in school and we having a hard time in school, she teaches us that God loves us and will forgive us and help us make better choices if we ask. Amen. She is the world's best peacemaker. She is faithful, kind, and gentle. She cares about the needs and goes the second mile to help when there's a need. A mother is Christ-like. And a mother would lay down her life for her children. A mother spend hours on her knees praying for her children. She is ready to make sacrifices for them. Her precious love demonstrates the love Jesus Christ had for mankind. A mother, a mother, there's nothing like a mother's love. Mother would tell you, I don't care how old you are, come on and lay your head on my shoulder. Mother would tell you, come on here and get you something to eat. They're like, they always want to feed you. Mama, I'm four, now you're not. Look at that skin. Mama, I weigh 280 pounds. You see, you get skin. Look like you ain't eating. Come on, over here and get something to eat. And you can't say no, and the food smells so good. <laughs> Why you got 280 pounds, eating all that fast food. But when you go home to mama, amen. How sometimes being a mom feels like a, a thankless task because mothers sometimes are overlooked. Mm -hmm. But uh, but to, to your mother is a beautiful expression of love in our Savior and the faithfulness of his unconditional love. Yes, sir. This makes a mother a part of the family of God. Mm -hmm. This makes a mother a part of the family of God. But there is something else that is needed to complete that family. Mm. Having a mother is great, but having a mother is not enough. Mm. God's love is total, and God's love is complete. Amen. Thank you. The family of God consists of all that have believed that, 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 that have believed in Him in the past, all who believe in Him in the present, and all who will believe in Him in the future. And those who do the will of God is His family. And a mother's party because the mother teaches the children about God. A good mother, a godly mother, teaches her child how to pray. A godly mother teaches her child how to read the scripture. A godly mother teaches her child how to act accordingly when you're out and about. Yes, sir. My mama's favorite words was, do not embarrass me. <laughs> do not embarrass me. Amen. Meaning when you go out, you better act accordingly. Because if you, if you don't, I'm going to find out about it. See, we grew up, we didn't have no phones. But if we went up and acted up, out, out, when we went about, Mama knew it for when we got home. How are you going to know it? It's no telephone. How do you know it? Don't you worry about it. I know it. Did you do it? You can't lie. Sometimes I think that she was just real psychiatrist, psychology owner. To see what you did, you tell on yourself. Did you do it? You got to get it, Mama. I, I ain't figured out today how you found out about it. You ain't got no telephone. Mm. Amen? Amen. <laughs> we are all a family because we have the same Father. Yes, sir. And His love is total. He is the source of all creation, the rightful owner of everything. God promised His love and power to His family. And this is what a mother teaches the, the children and the family. When we look at John 3, 16 and 17, it states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the world, through him, the world might be saved. That's a promise of God's love. See, see, a mother... A mother can love you, but see, God can save you, amen? A mother can love you, but God can deliver you. A mother can love you, but God has the keys to heaven and to hell. Yes, sir. Jesus said in Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 18th chapter, the verse, he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. See, Jesus has the power to do everything, and he allowed the mother to be part. Has all power. Yes, sir. He knows everything. Thank you. 
These promises are blessed from God to his family. And in order for us to continue to receive these blessings, to receive these promises, we have to stay in contact with the Father. And through staying in contact with the Father, we all have to stay in contact with other members. Think about this. How many times has your mother said for you to keep in touch with this person or stay in touch with that person or, or pray for this person? Make sure you go and see so-and-so. Make sure you go around and visit them. How many times your mother has instilled in you to make sure you stay close to your family and people around you? Pray for your enemies. Matter of fact, Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Pray for those that hate you. A mother's love tells you that from the beginning. Stay close to your family. Don't be isolated because if you do, you may end up all alone. Yes, it's the same way in God's family. If you try to always be alone, then you are alienating yourself from God's power and God's promise. Amen. See, you can't do this thing by yourself. And your mama will let you know that. This ain't you ain't by yourself in none of this. But see, the Bible says it's a forsake, not the sin, and not the same. See, you got to be around people of like minded. You got to be around people that's doing the same thing. You got to be around people that walk in the same way that you walk. Because if you're around people that are living in darkness, you're in the marvelous light, they're going to pull you back into the darkness. Amen. And then you're going to start walking. Well, now you, you, even though you got bad knees, but you still walk up right. But when they pull you back in darkness, you're going to go back in that living. Oh, your knees will start to hurt. Why? Because you, you went back into that darkness that you were in where God had took you into the marvelous light. So you want to separate from those that's in the darkness, but you want to creep on, crab, grab on to those that's in the light that's walking according to the way that the Lord wants you to walk. A mother's love is close to God's love, but God's love is total. Colossians, the second chapter, the 19th and 10th verse state, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. See, a mother's love comes with conditions, but God's love is unconditional. Amen. A mother's love comes with conditions, but God's love is unconditional. In Christ, there's all of God in a human body. So when we know Jesus, we don't need to seek God in any way else. We don't need, when we know Jesus, we don't have to go to the mosque. When we know Jesus, we don't have to go to Kingdom Hall. When we know Jesus, we don't have to lean to our own understanding because we know him as the power and the might of everything. That's right. When we know Jesus, <laughs> we don't need to go anywhere else but to him. As the songwriter says, I got Jesus and that's enough. Oh Lord, that's enough. Amen. We are complete in him. That means that nothing can separate us from God's love. Amen. See, when we are complete in Jesus Christ, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8.31 uh, states that what shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress? No. Or persecution? No. Or famine? No. Or nakedness? No. Or peril? No. Or sword? No. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. See, some things will separate us from our mother. Some things will separate us from our family. But nothing, when you know Jesus Christ, nothing can separate you from Jesus Christ. Amen. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep of the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us all. See, through Jesus Christ, we have the power. Through Jesus Christ, we have the testimony. Through Jesus Christ, we have the treasure within us. Nothing can separate us from that. Yeah. Well, you may say, well, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I was separated. If you were separated from Jesus Christ, that's your choice. 
Because when you're sealed in his hands, you know that song by Stephen One, the sign, seal, and deliver. Amen. But when you're signed, sealed, and delivered in Christ, mm -hmm. only you can separate you. Mm -hmm. Only you. Right. Nothing else can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. Because mm -hmm. we are we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. As Paul said, for I am persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor precious powers, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God who is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing again can separate us from the love of Jesus Christ. But again, when we die, when our mother passes on, we're separated from our mother. Amen. When family members die, we're separated from our, from our family members. We're separated. But when it comes to God and we're in his bosom, we're always connected. Why? Because he said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. He is always there. We're never separated. Again, if you want to be separated, it's on you. But God has opened up the windows of heaven and poured us out a blessing that there should not be room enough to receive it. He has made a way of escape even with the temptation that he always dealt with you. Amen. Amen. Never to leave you. Yes, sir. We can be separated from our family, from mothers, but we cannot be separated from God because of Jesus Christ. Amen. His death for us is proof of his unconditional love. Nothing can stop his constant presence with us. God's love is total. It is long. It continues the length of our lives. It is deep. It reaches to the depths of discouragement, despair, and even death. It is wide. It reaches out into the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It is high. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows through the Lord's valley. When you feel shut out or isolated, you can never be lost to God's love. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is always there. It is an awesome privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. It's an awesome privilege to be in God's power. It's an awesome privilege to be in the mix of the Lord. Amen. Because there's total and completeness in God. There's total and completeness in the Lord. When we are going through trials, call on the Lord. When you're going through tribulations, call on the Lord. Thank you. When your body is racking with pain, call on the Lord. When you got sickness all over your body, cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, call on the Lord. You know, some people got a problem with them because I ain't going to take this medicine, I ain't going to take that medicine, but I trust God. Amen. You know, if you trust God, then that means God put those doctors there. Yeah. Because I'm not a doctor, hmm. but doctors know about medicine. Yeah. But what I know about, I know about. But if you trust the Lord, he will send you to where you need to go. If you trust the Lord, and that's part of being with him, if you trust the Lord, he will make sure that your needs are taken care of. If you trust the Lord. And, and you know, you think about it, that word if, why would you think God would say if? You know, if this, if that. If you be in me, you would think that everybody will want to be in Christ. But everybody don't. But God makes a promise. If you be in me. Therefore, if you be in Christ, you're a new creature. Yes, See, that's that if. So, so God is letting you know it's a condition. It's here. It's a process. It's a condition. If you are, if you're going to do this in me, I'm going to promise you that I'm going to take care of you. If you do that, what you say you're going to do, I'm going to promise you that I never leave you. If you do as I instruct you to do, I promise you. 
it will, I'll always be there. If it's put there, because we have individuals that's not going to accept it. Second Chronicles 7, 14 states, if my people, ain't that something, if my people, you would think it should say, my people that call on my name. But God knows there's going to be some hard-headed, stiff-necked people out here that's going to continue to walk in their own way. That's going to continue to walk away from God. And they're looking back. See you later. I've got to go. And the Lord is sitting there just still waiting. Because if you make your bed in hell, he's right there. Amen. Wherever you go, he's right there. Yes, so you ain't fooling. You ain't getting away from him. But again, what he's doing that he's standing there waiting because he is complete. He's waiting for you to come to your senses and call on him. Yeah. But there's going to come a time and it's going to be too late. It's going to come a time he gave you all the chance in the world to call on his name. To hold on to his completeness. To hold on his, the totalness in God. The fullness in God. It's come a time when it's going to be too late. When your soul is going to be required of you and you're going to go and stand before the Lord. And, and you know, when you stand before the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. The praise song, amen. <laughs> when you go and stand before the Lord, when you go and stand before the Lord, what he's looking at or what he's looking for He's not looking for us. He's looking for the blood of the Lamb flowing through you. He's looking for the relationship that you have with his son. Thank you, Lord. He's not looking at our flesh and blood because we know flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. What he's looking for is what did you do with what I gave you to do according to my son. Yes, sir. Because if you, if, <laughs> if you did do what I instructed you to do, then you now are total also. Yes, sir. See, that's our reward, is that God is total. Mm -hmm. God's love is total. But when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and we die in him, mm -hmm. then we too become total. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It's over. And now we can live and reign with him forever. See, it's a process, my friends, that we have to go through. It's a process that we have to make sure in order for us to be with Christ. At the end, when we stand before God, it's a process that we have to go through. Are you willing to go through that process? Or do you want to live your life carelessly? Don't play with God. You know, I had a, this old lady told me, because they, they knew how, how I was growing up. I was a mess. And they called me by my mother name. It was ladies in the church. She said, she said, when don't you play with God? <laughs> I said, kid, I ain't gonna play with God. I'm scared of God. <laughs> He has all power. Don't play with God. Mm. And I'm saying that to you today. Mm. See, God is total. God's love is total. And God is complete. Don't play with God. Mm. If you know you ain't right in your life, get right with Jesus. Mm. Don't play with him and say that, yes, I, uh, some people say, yeah, I, I said, I'm doing what he said. But when Jesus is standing at the door knocking, running around. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Oh, wait, hold on. Hide that over there. Put that over. Put that away. You know. Don't play with God. Don't play with him. I, I told him. See, because I'm transparent. I told people, you know, I can't, let me tell you, I can't use uh, medical marijuana. 
even though the law says if I, you know, if I get a prescription, you know, you can use it. I can't. But see, I know me. I find a way to get two or three prescriptions. <laughs> I, I find a way to I need extra marijuana. <laughs> I find a way to and that's praying with God. So I don't need it. I don't need that. Because I know I know who I am, amen. And I know some of you out there the same way. Yeah, you gotta stay away from those things. You know, I can't drink the wine. I can't use red wine for my stomach because when I drink wine, then I want some liquor. Amen. <laughs> amen. I, you got to know your limitations. God already knows your limitations. Yeah, you know, you're going to drink your stomach hurt or while you drink some red wine. But yeah, but see, I, I started drinking wine, then I'm going to want some scotch. <laughs> well, I can drink a hot tie. I drink a fifth cent shot, then I get a dollar shot. Then next thing you know, I got a half paint. Next thing I got a paint. Next thing you know, I got a fifth. And I said, well, Lord, you know it's for my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> See, God is total in what, everything that he do. Yeah. And in yeah. him is the fullness of the Godhead body. Yeah. So what he's planted into us is that we have to know our limitations. Mm -hmm. Know what you can and cannot do. Know what it is that God has planted inside of you and what God has given you to do, do it well. Amen. You can't fool God. For this is to manifest in your life. You must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And to do this is as simple, so simple as this. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. In order for you to know your limitations and know what it is that you can and cannot do, you got to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because it is him that's going to instruct you. It's him through the Holy Spirit going to tell you. It is him through the Holy Spirit that's going to guide you and lead you into all truths. And he's not going to send you astray. So trust in the Lord and he will show you how. Trust in the Lord and he will give you your way. And now once he lays it out there for you, don't stray the other way. Once he lays it out there for you, don't go back to the way you came from. Once he lays it out there for you, continue on the straight and narrow path of righteousness. Why? Because you will end up with your inheritance that is in heaven. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in me, then also in he that sent me, that in my Father's house are many mansions. See, he went to prepare a place for us. And if you stay on that straight and narrow path of righteousness, that place that he prepared for us will be there waiting for us. And that is the totalness of God. <coughs> for those of you that's out there, that's in here, that's out there, that's looking, listening uh, to this word today, we pray, hallelujah, that if you're out there under the sound of my voice and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we're asking you right now to do that. If you're here today and you don't know Christ for, as the pardon of your sins, if you don't know, and what that means is that if you, if the Lord came and touched you right there and said your soul is required today uh, to come and stand before me, and if you do, if that happens, and you know that if you die, then you're going to hell. You need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, the worst way to die is to die in your sins. Some people think that, you know, you get shot up, you get burned up, you get cut up. That's the worst way to die. No. You could be living, you could be healthy as I don't know what, but don't know Jesus Christ and die in your sins, and you go straight to, the, to hell, to the damnation. So if you're out there today, on Facebook, on call in, on Zoom, in the house, and if you don't know, Jesus is your Lord and Savior. This is your opportunity yeah, you. to do so. Just call upon the name of the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord. 
and you shall be saved. And that's the word. That's the word of God. If you confess, hallelujah, that God raised him. For the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't know about you. But I know that I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to be tormented the rest of my life. I want to die. I know I want to die. But I want to be with the Lord forever. Thank you, Lord. And there's a process that we got to go through to get there. And everybody got to go through that same process. There is no different way. It's only through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man goes to the Father except through him. Because God's love is total. If you're out there and you need a relationship with him, ask him right where you are. Right where you are, let him know that you need help. And, and, and if you need help even further, you can contact us here at, at Crew Ministry of the New Beginnings. And we will point you in the right direction. We can't save you, but we can point you towards Jesus Christ. He has all the power. He's the one that saves us. He's the one that keeps us. Hallelujah. Is there one? Is there one? For whosoever call upon his name shall be saved.